now that we are sons. Now we are sons. Praise God. Before we move on, I'd like us to look at who a son is. Who is a son? What is the definition of a son? A lot of people just think that um, it is enough to just say, okay, I am a son of God. I am a child of God. But there is more to just be professing that you are a son. There are a lot of responsibilities that comes with being a son of God, especially. Who is a son in our in our normal uh, uh, world and activity around us? We know that a son is a male offspring. He is a male offspring. And he, he is saddled with, uh, uh, with the posterity responsibility. You know, if you come from the part of the world where I come from, some people believe that if you have not yet have, uh, if you don't have a son yet, that um, your lineage or your name may perish uh, uh, so to say thank god for now where women are being reckoned with so that is to tell you the importance or how much uh, a male child a son to say how much they they, they mean to, to their parents so they are saddled with the uh, responsibility of a posterity to preserve the names of of the family praise god his uh, our son is charged with the responsibility of holding his father to a high stand as much as a child is uh is started with the responsibility of um of um posterity let us look at the genesis 1 28 we saw that in genesis 1 28 even god was counting on adam and eve to you know to, to propagate to to feel to fill the earth, you know, to replenish it, to replenish, to subdue, to multiply, to increase so that it can subdue it. So the sole responsibility, one of the responsibilities of a son is for preservation of the father's name and posterity so that, um, he, you know, you know, he can populate. And a son also holds his father to a high standard. He holds his father to a high standard to make his father proud, make his father proud. He sees his father as as, as a strong influence a child sees his father as a strong influence upon his life he sees a, he sees a, a, a the father figure of a father as a strong influence upon his life whether in his absence whether in the father's absence or whether the father is alive he still you know take the influence of the father into consideration as they still make use of that he still values that even throughout his lifetime so this goes um a long way to say that the son looks up to the father the son looks up to the father in so many areas of his life if you agree with me the son looks up to the father for mentorship he looks up to the father for, for provision he looks up to the father for guidance and counsel even throughout uh, um, his, his his lifetime so a son is expected to make his father proud and also to protect and defend his family you know a lot of time when we say, hey, if you see our son if you see if you see the, the father's son if you see the number of children this man um, and so on and so forth so a man little one that the bible talks about uh, children that uh, blesses the man who has a, 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 a squiver full of them that he will not be ashamed at the gate of at the gate of the uh, uh, at his gate because when the enemy comes to speak against him the children will rise up for his uh, uh, for his sake so so sons they are supposed to defend their family and to protect their family now a son can be biological or can be adopted we can have adopted son and uh, we can have the one that comes for us from us directly so and uh, whether adopted, whether uh, biological, as long as the father has chosen to adopt that son, he began to bear the name, or he begins rather to bear the name of the son. And as such, whatever accolade, whatever respect that is uh, 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 given to the father, when the child gets to some certain places to become a representative of that father, especially when we look at into the uh, into the 
the life or if you take a, an influential man as an example a man of affluence and, and power when the son stand to <coughs> excuse me to stand to represent such a man wherever the man sends him the father sends him such a son we carry the same authority such a son will be given the same respect such a son will be given the same audience and attention that the father is given because why the name of the father is is, is uh, the son bears the name uh, the name of the father and also automatically the authority and the affluent influence that the father has has been conferred onto the son because at that moment it becomes a representative of the father it becomes an ambassador of the father so to say if i say now the president of this country is not available and he asks his son whether adopted it doesn't matter whether he whether he's adopted or not the moment he says that i come to you to on behalf of my father everybody sees him as the father at that particular time everybody sees him at that particular time as the father because why the moment a child is adopted or is born to a son it becomes a representative of the father it becomes a citizen of that father when that is adopted the moment he is adopted and the necessary uh, legal works are being carried out it becomes a citizen of the home country of the father say for example if my father is from uh, 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 Africa and I, uh, 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 maybe is late or whatever circumstances were that I am adopted by an European father once the document the legal document has been done what happened is I become a citizen of that adopted father now it is left for me to choose to claim whichever when i come to age of course so we see that uh, and as a matter of fact whether the father is is alive or not there are so many benefits that a son enjoys okay once the father is of the stage whatever inheritance he has this is conferred is transferred to who to the sons whether they are whether it's adopted or not it is what he, the inheritance are being transferred to the son now how much more when we talk about a biological son we'll talk about a biological son a biological son sometimes carries the same likeness features image of of a father such that when they see the father they say no this is a uh, uh, the son of mr so 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 in fact at times you don't need to see you don't you don't need to be told when you see a son whose father is wealthy you will see the kind of things they are they are endowed with the kind of cosmetics they use the materials or of their garments the kind of places the kind of uh of uh, material things that they enjoy so you can with this you can see who a son is by the things he has which he has gained from the father he and some also the dna of the father we automatically be transferred to that son whether he likes it or not it is not by choice as long as you're a biological son this be with the transfer even the one that is adopted as a matter of time by the time he spent so much so much time with the father what happened is that what happens is that the, uh, the characters of the father the attitude of the father begin to rub off on him sometimes and just ah, when did you let this up oh, it rubs off on me from my father praise god so we can say now that uh, um, the son actually is like a representative of the father praise god so we have we see so there are so many uh, um things that we can say about us for those of us who have children who have sons that we know we have aspirations and the things that are expected of us so now let's take this back to uh the biblical the biblical uh the biblical what the biblical scenario now so we know that sons in the bible are being referred to both male and female 
Yeah, because there is no female in Christ. Okay, we are all sons of God. As long as you're a child of God, you have become sons of God. As long as you are a Christian. And um, if you look at the Bible, when God, when the, when the scriptures are here, uh, uh, David, the son, or Jesus, the son of David, one thing that connotes that is, for geno uh, 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 for is it genealogy's sake? Yes, for genealogy's sake to know the origin where that person comes from. And another reason why we may, we have sons in the Bible, sons when we talk about sons, it shows relationship. It shows relationship. So the the term son in the Bible is is very wealthy, depending on who we are talking about. When uh, uh, who is involved, the father, who the father is involved, who the son is, and the circumstances as at that time. We know we know the sons of Skiva, we know why they were referred to as the sons of Skiva. So, you know, these ones who they are the son of so 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 person who did this, and we know those ones whose name, whose father's name were not even mentioned because they were of no uh, genealogy or they had no, you know, no importance. So, the Bible never really made mention of their name. So, whichever reason it is, we know that the name. Or where we hear the son is of utmost importance. A little one that even Jesus himself says he is the son of God. You hear the uh, the the, uh, the first son, the firstborn son. Jesus, the Lord, even in the scripture, there is a law that was attached to sons in the scripture because the son usually portrays the might and power, the strength of the father. The son showed the strength and the power of the father. Sons like this father of, of, of a posterity of, of their lives being, you know, being continued, being in existence even after they have, you know, transcended into the world beyond. Now, I said the first thing, when we hear the term, uh, the term son, it always carry a deeper meaning depending on who is involved or what context, whichever way, it always points to gene uh, genealogy. For example, Jesus, uh, 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 in uh, Luke 9.19, if you look at Luke 9.19, let us open to Luke 9.19. Jesus referred to Zacchaeus there as the son of um, Abraham. Luke 9. I'm just going to read that for us. Luke 9. Okay, I mean Luke 19 rather. Luke chapter 19 verse 9. Luke 19 verse 9. Okay, and Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation. Okay, let me read from verse 8. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house. For so much has he also is a son of Abraham. So for genealogy's sake, uh, Zacchaeus was referred to uh, as a son of Abraham. We saw in Galatians chapter 3. Let us open to Galatians chapter 3 from verse 6 to 9. Galatians. Sorry. Galatians chapter 3. From verse 6 to 9, I read from verse 6. Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, know you therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Eden through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So we see here that in that verse 8, that the scripture referred to Abraham because the Lord has preached the gospel. Because the gospel was preached unto Abraham and it's mixed with faith in his heart and it was counted unto him as righteousness. Therefore, there is a clause attached that through him nations of the world will be blessed. So Christ Christ for this so Christ in um Luke 19 I referred to Zacchaeus as a son of Abraham because why Abraham believed he had faith in the gospel and so Zacchaeus believed in Jesus Christ he had the message of faith the message of gospel and he had faith he asked the Lord that what can he do so 
As believers, we are sons already because we believed in the gospel and have faith. We are sons because we believe the gospel and have faith. In that same Galatians chapter 3, let us look at 26 and 27. Galatians 3, 26 and 27. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. We have been put on Christ. Praise God. So what I'm saying now is we are we are Christians already because we have faith and therefore we are sons of God. And we know that one of the reasons is because uh, when the song is being mentioned is for gene genealogy's sake. So if we are to trace our genealogy now as believers, as Christians, we will trace it to everyone, if you can trace it, you can say for the sake of blessings, I'm, I'm a seed of Abraham, but if we trace our origin, our genealogy now, it will be traced to, to Jesus, to God, because now we have faith and therefore we are sons of God as believers. Now, another thing is um, being a son means we carry out the purpose of of the father because why the life of the father is being transferred to you the life of the father is being transferred to you so therefore you must carry you must fulfill the mandate of the father just like you an earthly father we wish if you have a good company and is blooming you will not want an outsider and uh, to take over is uh, is what is uh, uh, to take over your company as much as you will be willing to employ outsiders who is not of your family, you know, to 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 take to to share in the responsibility and the vision and aim of 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 the organization. Okay, but deep down you you would want you would wish that your son takes over your company in fact at a particular stage in your life when you are weak when you can you are not free to run around you will wish that your son takes over your responsibility so so also in the christian now that you can trace our genealogy to christ to god we know that god has a purpose and we are saddled with the responsibility of making sure that the purpose of the father comes to free because why a son carries the life of the father the son carries the life of the father and so much more he has to preserve the life and the purpose of the father by getting into the business of the father Jesus made this clear when he worked on earth in John 9 in John 9 verse 4, Jesus said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The works there talks about labor. Labor. If you look at the literal meaning of the works, it says labor. I must labor. I must be committed. I must strive to do the works of him that sent me. Because why? Here, while it is day, while I am here on earth, I am not here to gallop that around i am not here you know you know to, to mind the business of this world i am not here to do the things that does not pertain to the kingdom because as a matter of fact my father is in heaven and i am also going back to him as christians we know that this life we are on transient in this life and you do not have the luxury of time as much as we do not pray that we die in our prime Nobody knows what will happen tomorrow. We wish, we know that good, only good happens to us tomorrow. But come on guys, what about the Christians, the believers, the men of God who died before, you know, their full ripe age? What happened to them? What happened to them? We saw go, uh, 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 last week Friday when Pastor was talking, I think he was talking about it. Uh, was it Joshua? That Joshua, you are old, but yes, you still have a lot of territories to conquer. What about horse? What about horse? What are we doing? So Jesus said, I, I must labor. You see, I must labor. To labor means to put yourself into, into what? 
uh, uh, it, it has to take zeal it takes energy i must labor i must do the works of him that sent me i must i must work the works of him that sent me when it is there so how do i attach this to to the son carrying out the purpose of the father because he has the life of the father jesus has a clear cut of the purpose of god he understood why he was here on earth he understood what the lord has sent him to do he know that the he knows that God has committed an assignment or work unto him which requires urgency, which requires to labor, which requires, which, which he knows that has a time frame, which is the day, which is the day when the night comes. A lot of things can mean the night, your strength, when your strength fail you, it means your night has come already. Some of us are out there, we don't even know the works, we don't even know that, the, that God has committed a work in to our hands let alone understanding that work which god has committed into you brethren if you don't know today there is a universal work that the lord has committed into our hands so you see as sons as sons we have the father's business to do and we must labor we must labor we must labor we must labor just like apostle paul said he had he said i have fought i fought the good fight i have won the race we must labor he said he labored he labored to do this he labored not by might not by power yes it is true but we must play our role as believers we must labor you see this statement of jesus connotes a lot of things it connotes urgency okay it connotes urgency and as a matter of a clear understanding of the purpose so for every believer we are created by the by god with an intention it is not that you must god did not create you in genesis 1 28 to come and born you know to born girl to born make to make sure that you want to born for two girls two boys and then you are happy and then and then your children uh, get married they go to good schools and then you become a grandmother you eat the fruit of your labor and then mm, you die no that is not if you're having that same dream if that is your purpose i'm telling you you're having the same purpose that the unbelievers have and that has nothing that is a life that is what we call vanity upon vanity okay that's why we say vanity upon vanity the purpose of god for our lives is more than just coming into this world and uh, you know and just giving birth okay it's not the main thing because even at the end of the day both your son your wife everybody will be accounting unto god that which he did with his life in the hand everyone okay everyone everyone don't get me wrong i am not saying that um your children are not are not your responsibility but i'm saying that god has a has a purpose in mind when he created us see of all the creatures in genesis uh in genesis in the book of genesis which of them did god say to the father the son and the holy spirit say come let us make man which of them did or when he was creating the way he said come let us make way no it takes everything it takes the likeness and the image of the holy spirit which is the power of god it takes the likeness and the image of jesus which is the son of god it takes the likeness and god himself which which is authority and uh, and and the immortality okay uh, um immortality you know immortal to, to to create man to create man in his likeness in his image in his everything so god has a mind okay it's not just that he just want to be seen us okay i have created man in my image let me just be looking at him there and if i want to see yeah it's not about that he has he has an intention for creating us so see it is god's desire that men come to the knowledge of him through his son and that there will be a generation of true sons and daughters of god that is the intention of God that there is a generation of people who are set aside who can be called his own sons, his own people. Praise God. If you look at um, uh, uh, who shall uh, uh, who are sons who shall be heirs 
of his of his kingdom in genesis 12 2 to 4 genesis 12 let us read that genesis 12 so it won't look like i'm just talking i'm talking uh genesis chapter 12 verse 2 to 4 and i will make the uh, uh god was okay let's read re, let's read from uh, verse 1 genesis chapter 12 now the lord hath said unto abraham get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that i will show thee and i will make of thee a great nation and i will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing and i will bless them that bless thee and curse the, him that curseth thee and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed so Abraham the parted as the Lord has spoken unto him and not went with him and Abraham was 70 and 5 years old when he departed out of Abraham see Abraham did as God has said unto him he received the purpose God has spoken to him and so Abraham believed that purpose which God and God gave him see this is what this is my plan for you this is what I want you to do and because you have believed I want to create a people out of you who will be called by my name okay so Abraham understood that plan of God so much so that even he commanded a servant hmm? see not just see there was a time that even God vouched for him and was like how can I keep uh, uh, something like this when he was going to the uh, destroy Sodom and Gomorrah how can I keep something like this uh, from Abraham knowing that he will do what he will train his children after me his children will know me for posterity's sake he is going to fulfill my mandate he is going to make sure that he multiplies he fulfills he multiplies and he subdues the earth through what through the posterity of the gospel which he has received so much so that abraham a servant worship the same God that Abraham worshiped and went on to tell the uh, Abraham uh, uh, Abraham told the servant that when you are getting a wife for my son Isaac don't just pick any woman from anywhere because why because there is the father's business at stake there is the father's business at stake and that is why as believers we don't just do things anyhow we don't just do things anyhow Abraham God did not tell Abraham that uh, okay Abraham if you want to choose if Isaac wants to choose wife don't know God had already told Abraham that move out of your kindred out of your family don't go back to them so he knows what it has, what is at stake he knows so so much so much that he, he he knows that there is a posterity to preserve there is a lineage there is a genealogy that has to continue which is linked to God so we must preserve it I they cannot just choose wife from anywhere because why because the father's business is at stake the purpose of God is at stake so that there will be nations of uh, so that nations all around the world will be blessed will come to God because of Abraham through faith not to Abraham like that like, through faith you know you understand I already said that before so uh, uh, to everyone who will come into this family Abraham knew that no <laughs> we can't just bring any help person. We cannot just bring what bring any help person. And we know we saw it in the Bible that uh, and those who left the purpose which God has called them into, they failed. They failed. Those who went to marry where they were not supposed to marry. We know the story of Solomon. The Bible says that um, his wives and his concubine turned his heart away from God. So uh, Solomon began to worship strange gods and began to offer sacrifices uh, uh, um, unto the gods of his wife. So as children of God, we must take the father's business into consideration, into purpose. You can't just do things anyhow we can't just do things anyhow because there has to be a generation in fact the the plan of god the mind of god the purpose of god is that the whole world you know come to the knowledge of his word that the knowledge of the lord covers the earth even as water covers the the sea so as we begin to you know to, 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 to multiply then the people the source of god begin to take over begin to fill the air let us look at um, that same galatians i'll be making a lot of reference uh since to that to galatians galatians 3 8 
Galatians chapter 3. Sorry, one minute, please. Galatians 3 8 to 9. And uh, uh, um, see, it says concerning. Uh, okay, let me read from, uh, from verse. Okay, from verse 6. Galatians 3 from verse 6. Even as Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness, know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith. Now you see, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So the gospel, what Abraham did was Abraham believed the gospel because it was preached unto him he had faith and he made sure that he continued to preach the gospel both unto his servants they were circumcised they had faith they were circumcised he went on to preach the gospel even unto his son isaac praise god he went on to preach his uh, unto his son isaac so everyone who comes to through the knowledge of so the for uh, how do I say for uh, for posterity's sake God revealed his plan and purpose and from here we saw the purpose that the Eden might be saved through the gospel because God knew he was going to save the whole world through what through uh, this gospel so therefore he called out his own sons first so that they will multiply they will subdue they will propagate the kingdom of heaven that is the responsibility and the mind of god so they which are of faith are the children of um of abraham remember the case of Cain and abel i hope we all remember the case of um Cain and abel you know uh abel was a shadow of a man of faith okay and when Cain uh, 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 slew abel uh, when he slew abel he took uh eve to conceive, you know, um, Adam already fell. Adam was a man who does not have faith, who, does, who God preached the gospel through, and he did not believe in the works of Christ. So, but Abel stood as a figure of a man who had faith because why it was recorded that Cain was a man uh, who, who walks in the flesh, so he was a man who sinned, was always really so. Abel had faith, and then when Cain slew Abel. Do you know what happened? It took him to conceive another son. Another son. It took that son of Eve to conceive another son in us. And the Bible says it was not until that time when men began to call on the name of the Lord. I don't want to know whatever transpired between those periods of time, but I knew that at that time when Cain was still a man of faith, one who could have carried on, you know, no, you know what he believed, what God has told him, what, what one who believed, the, who had faith in God, who could have passed that on, you know, was cleared off the stage. So what happened? There were men lost touch with God until Enos was born. And Bible recorded that men began to call on the name of the Lord. You can see that in uh, um. Um, in Genesis 4 26, you can see that in Genesis 4 26. So, Enoch, uh, 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 began, because of Enos, men began to call on the name of the Lord. So, we see now that um, uh, a lot is uh, uh, is saddled upon us as sons of God. Now, I'm talking about sons, I'm referring to daughters and sons also. So, a lot of responsibility is saddled upon us. If we do nothing, the, if we do nothing, what will happen? I know God can raise stones. Of course, God can raise stones to praise Him, to worship Him. But if the gospel is not preached, if the purpose and plan of God is not taken into urgency, if we don't walk along with it, may it not be said concerning us that at this generation, at this time, that men stopped calling on the name of the Lord until another generation came. You know, we have, for those of us who are in this land, we have been saddled with the responsibility of, of, of what 
of being fruitful being fruitful to bear fruit to bear fruit being fruitful to bear fruit so that our fruits abide then we can multiply and propagate this territory of course it takes the helps of the lord but then it takes labor it takes labor it takes us to labor in fervency in spirit in breaking of bread in eating the word both day and night and in praying on our knees on our knees how much are we willing to go what are the things what are the sacrifices that we are ready uh, to, to pay to pay so you see as believers uh, uh, men will lost touch with God if we do nothing if we do nothing if we do nothing so the gospel God needs man God needs us to preach the word to preach the word to preach the word see God already had already seen this happen he had already seen this happen he knew that in his sons who we do this for him that was why he had to call out his own people he called out his own people he showed forth his ways unto them so that they may know him so that we may know him okay and in knowing him we will be able to explain to others to the evening that this sin this is the mind of god this is what god has done for us so all the prophets and poets and the apostles understood the purpose of God and their lives are swept and they co they, uh, they understood the purpose of God and they committed their lives and all that they had to eat they committed their lives to eat the prophet the apostles and if you look at all their all of these prophets you will discover that all of them preached the same thing all of them had the message they had one message they had one message they had one message do you know why how do i know that they had one message jesus told his disciples uh when they didn't believe that um, he had reason he said oh you fools slow of heart how is it that uh you didn't believe these things as it not be said as it not be written from moses even unto the prophet it is written everything about this thing is written at this point i uh, like us to to look at um look look let's look let's uh, read look look 24 it's a very lengthy passage i'm going to i'd like us to read to the end if we can read to the end don't be tired open your bible Luke, um, Luke 24. So I am going to read from verse 1. Now, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the uh, sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass as they were much perplexed there about behold two men stood okay um let me move you can read that because it's a very uh it's a very lengthy passage okay to, to short to cut to uh, in summary they went there they were trying to look for christ they didn't know that christ uh, had risen so let me go to um verse 24 let's read from verse 24 looks 24 24 and certain of them which were which were with us went to the sepulchre and found it even so as the women had said but him they saw not that is jesus they saw jesus not then he said unto them that is jesus christ jesus said unto them all fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken you see all the prophets, they had the message, they saw what the intentions of God was, and they committed their lives to it. They made sure that it was so much spoken that it was written, even in the scriptures. And that is why we can make reference to it. Remember, I once told us that the scriptures, uh, the, 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 the Old Testament is uh, the new testament is the old testament explained so uh whatever is is in the new testament it has already been written in is, is is from the old testament or when jesus came to this world what the what was he preaching with he was preaching from the old testament actually he was preaching from the scriptures the holy scriptures so let's move on from verse 27 i'm beginning at okay 
verse 26 ought not christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory and beginning at moses and all the prophets he expounded unto them all in all the scriptures the things concerning himself so if it takes if it takes god to keep on looking for prophet to keep on looking for sons to keep on looking for for poet to keep to keep on looking for you know from from uh, 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 leaders like Daniel, like uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, what? Like another? He said another savior. Like um, what's the name of this guy that his head was shaved? Huh? Something. If he keeps on looking for those, just so why he was talking about his plan, so that it should tell you how much more the Father carries this business, how much of how much importance the Father plays. On this business to have taken that long time to begin to talk about this things and it was documented so and beginning at Moses that is from Genesis and all the prophet he expanded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself the things concerning himself what are the things that concerns him and they drew near unto the village whither they went and he made as though he would have gone further but they constrained him saying abide with us for it is toward evening and the day is fast spent and he went to tarry with them and it came to pass okay uh let me move on uh in verse 34 okay in verse 37 you can you can read that you can read Luke 1 to uh, 24, 1 to 53. In verse 37, he appeared unto them again, but they were terrified and um, afraid, affrighted in 37. And suppose that they had seen a spirit, and he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do, do thoughts arise in your heart? Behold, my hands and feet. He showed them. In verse 44 again, he went on and he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which we are written in the law of Moses and in the prophet can you see he said it again and even in the sand concerning me so if you are reading psalms if you are reading genesis if you are reading uh, exodus from all the scriptures even the psalms they prophesy about the things that concern jesus listen to verse 45 then open e their understanding that they might understand the scriptures see do not get tired of praying that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened why because the bible talks about a veil covering the heart of men see you can read the scriptures you can read the bible to an unbeliever to the atheist to the heathen the scripture this bible is just like a, a storybook it's just in fact i heard somebody say this they study it as a one of history or whatever so he had to open their eyes so that they will understand the scriptures and said unto them listen those verse 46 it is written and thus it is behold do you know what is behold? it is it is of uttermost importance it is important it is very 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 important of uttermost importance listen that christ should suffer and to rise from the dead a third day why is it important why is it important that christ should, should suffer and rise on the third days verse 47 say and that repentance and remissions of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at jerusalem verse 48 says and ye are witnesses of these things so as son we are witnesses of these things but we have to get to a place where god has to open our eyes that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened so that what we can understand what the scripture says about god so that we can understand the purpose and plan of god and see when a, a, a purpose is not known they said abuse when a purpose of thing is not known abuse is inevitable therefore when the plans of god is not known believe us we only think that what god planned for us is that we come into this heart live a good life be born again speak in tongue do evangelism uh, once in a while when they call you and that will be all uh, no 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 there is more to it we 
we must understand what God has called us into. Even if you don't understand these scriptures, if you don't understand it, how do you want to talk about it to someone else? How can you be so much convinced that you begin to, you, you know, speak to it, speak about it? In Luke 24, 48, it says, And ye are witness. I am a witness. You are a witness. Witness to what things? Witness to what things? That our God can kill. Witness to what things? That our, our, our God, uh, God will call out to save those and kill them. No. Witness to what things? That God is fearful and awesome. The Bible says that repentance must be preached. Repentance and remissions of of sins must be preached by the sufferings of Christ. That is, he said, behold, he, uh, uh, that, that is, the things that he's talking about is of necessity that we mo that must be established by the counsel and the decree of God, especially by the purpose of his which relates to salvation. Which relates to salvation of men by the intervention of Christ. Because God had to, you know, Christ interposed. You know what, when they mean, what it means to interpose? When, like, he came to block us when judgment, when sin wanted, to, you know, judgment, the penalty of sin would have, would have killed us and would have been eternally doomed. He interposed, like, he, 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 I don't know how to explain, like, he interposed for our sake, okay, by Christ's intervention, uh, which is, the, is disclosed in the Old Testament through prophecies. Praise God. What was disclosed through prophecy? Number one, the sufferings of Christ. All the sufferings of Christ. That the sufferings of Christ was prophesied by Isaiah. Isaiah prophesied it. Moses, everybody prophesied it. The sufferings of Christ. And that Christ will rise from the dead the third day. And he will enter into his glory. And that repentance be made through this now if you look at the word repentance metanoi uh, uh, metanoi metanoi repentance it means to think differently to have a change of mind towards god what did uh, the devil did to uh, 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 eve and uh, the husband he tried to convince them to give them a change of heart so that men we have a change of heart concerning God. A lot of people, if, if I if I check some words, uh, uh, if I look on YouTube and I just listen to some sermons, uh, if I read through some uh, some comments, you see people say, come on, go and sit down. I'm telling you what I read. People will be making comments like, who is your God? Oh, you think your God exists. So your God exists and is punishing you people. Calamity is happening. Is your God that is causing a lot of calamity? at all you know so that this kind of people when we preach the sufferings of christ and how he is risen and enter into his glory by the reason of that word faith becomes a life in their hearts and what happened and then we have a change of heart repentance means have a change of heart thinking differently okay so that they can think differently, they can have a change of heart, they can believe, have faith in the sacrifices that God has made available for them. And that remission, remission means deliverance, deliverance, forgiveness, liberty, release from bondage of hell, from bondage of sin. It says, should be preached, should be preached. I'm still reading that uh, 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 Luke 24, should be preached should be preached in his name should be preached now the word preached there is caruso okay the word preached there is caruso the meaning of caruso means to proclaim aloud publicly to shout it is not to be doing hide and seek christianity when people at your organization cannot say that yes there is something different with you when you cannot come into their influence and when you cannot come into their midst and by the reason of you coming into their midst you begin to influence a lot of things by the way you know you know here it is forbidden uh, forbidden for us to talk about our religion and all, all the but i can still tell you i don't just want to mention and say some things but i can still tell you there are still some people that still say bookie i want i wish i can be like you i wish i can do things like you even in my organizations i am telling you this and when people begin to say things like that and i say 
I, I was talking to one. I said, it is not by my power. It is not by my mouth. One was saying that uh, you are so holy and so pure. To the extent that there was a particular time, that person was even asking me to pray. The last, well, you know, you can't rush there. At this point, when is I, I wish to be like you, you are so pure. I said, I said, it is not by my might. It is not by my power. You also can be, can come to this state of purity when people see you because of what god has done and because of that even though it is forbidden i was able to preach the gospel to her at that instant and the person told me that she's trying to become like me see what am i saying is you know even though you are here that this thing is handicapping you that this environment cannot just wake up and but what are you doing with all that platform with your life keruso is meant to proclaim to you know to go out like we do in our country to speak aloud proclaim keruso you don't keep quiet about that you don't keep quiet about the things that god has done for you. if truly you understand the intentions and the mind of god that god is trying to save man from second death from dying internally so we pray it means to openly publicly talk about the things of god okay to talk about the gospel of jesus christ just like uh, uh, john the baptist did he said and ye shall be witness of these things these things you shall be witnesses of those things so as as sons of god we have known now the responsibility and the purpose of god the purpose and the mind of god and we are saddled with the responsibility of doing what of proclaiming this things, of shouting out proclaiming it here and there talking about it talking about the suffering talking about the death and the resurrection and how god enter into his glory uh, how christ enter into uh, uh, his glory okay he said by this by doing this and that repentance and remission of sins i ask man to turn away from their sin. See, the greatest gift you can give to anybody is no husband is no wife is no money is no job it is what it is jesus christ that is the greatest gift that you can give to any man and we saw christ what christ is saying i have come to do the works of him that sent me while it is day as son we have the strength now we have the figure we still have the bread in our nostrils let us take up the responsibilities of our father as sons and begin to proclaim the gospel so that men may turn their heart to god praise the lord at this point, I am going to stop here and we still look on to, uh, we continue uh, in the series of, we, uh, uh, what's the topic again? Uh, now are we sons, now are we sons. And I pray as we continue in this world that the Lord will open the eyes of our understanding, even me, that I'll be able to speak expressly the mind of the Father. Why don't you begin to thank the name of the Almighty God because He has answered our prayer. I, 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 sorry, bless us, thank God, because He has opened our eyes by the reason of this word. And light will begin to flood our hearts. We begin to understand the scriptures and the mind of God part time so that we may take into into our we may take into account everything that we do so that it will align with the will and the purpose of god let us speak concerning the nations of the world that the knowledge of god will fill the heart in the name of jesus even as water covers the sea we see your glory fill the earth oh god we see your knowledge we see your knowledge we see your knowledge we see light the, we see light the spelling darkness in the heart of men we see men turning to you in in the name of Jesus, we see, we see, we see, we see your glory filling the heart. We see men in coming into the light of you, men drawing into, into your light, the knowledge of you filling the heart in the name of Jesus. We see men saved, men saved, men saved from the structure. Thank you in the name of Jesus. We receive boldness. We receive boldness to proclaim this word aloud. We receive boldness. Thank you, King of glory, for in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Praise the Lord. I want to thank you all for joining uh, uh, today's uh, uh, study. And I hope that uh, you will join us also on Friday for our service. Our services still, uh, still host both offline and online. And service starts by 3 